Today, I'm going to speak about a time after the Lucchese family changed leadership back in 2017. To begin with, when something like that happens inside of a family, you have two different kinds of emotions going on by its members. For argument's sake, I'll call it downs and highs. What does that mean? When an administration is in place, you have the people that are close to them and those who kiss their ass in order to get close to them. At the end of the day, it benefits these people to be in the good graces of the administration. However, when administrative positions change, these same people who were once close to them are walking around down because they know change is coming. Conversely, the guys who are close to the people who are stepping into positions of authority are walking around on a high. They also know change is coming, but change that'll be in their best interest. As we know, this was a far cry from just new people taking positions. But what it equated to was the base of power shifting from the Bronx to Brooklyn. A lot of people consistently question why there was animosity between Brooklyn and the Bronx crews. The answer is simple and straightforward. Aside from normal borough rivalry, Similar to Yankees and Met fans, the dislike for Brooklyn can be traced back to Vicar Musso and Gaspipe. When the base of power for the Lucchese family shifted from the Harlem Bronx base to Brooklyn, it was accomplished by murder. The first guy to go was Buddy Luongo, who in reality was supposed to be the acting boss and was picked by Tony Ducks himself. Then Mike Salerno, another Bronx captain, was also killed. Vic and Gas were sending the Bronx a loud and clear message. We're in control, and this is how we deal with members of the Bronx that we feel a challenge in us. So naturally, there's always been this bitterness with crews in the Bronx. With the new administration, there's always going to be some shuffling. It's inevitable. As I mentioned, our crew, the Brooklyn faction, was affected the most. There were several guys who didn't want to be in a crew on the Big John. However, Anthony and I still remained in his crew. At the time, I was supposed to be removed from that crew as soon as Big John went away. And we knew that was going to happen because he was taking a plea. Mikey DeSantis wanted to create a second Brooklyn crew, but then everything with me took place and I was done. Anthony remained in Big John's crew until he began serving his sentence. But according to sources, Anthony was transferred to Joe Cafe's crew, which used to be a Long Island crew. Unconfirmed reports have Joe Cafe taken over Dom Trisulo's Manhattan crew after Dom passed away. Nevertheless, for now, that's unconfirmed. Before I get into Joe Cafe, I want to discuss Anthony's character. And what I mean by this is his character as a member in the family. As I've previously mentioned, initially, Anthony got cold feet and didn't want to be inducted. Joey DiBenedetto and myself spoke with him, and ultimately, I convinced him. Anthony's a guy who wants to go to heaven, but doesn't want to die to get there. After our induction, there was never one time that I seen Anthony where he wasn't complaining about having to show his face at the cigar lounge or at the club up in the Bronx or to go to a wake or to go on a mission. In Anthony's mind, it was all an inconvenience to him. And he always had an excuse ready. In that life, because it's known that the FBI is on everyone's phones, anytime you need to speak to someone, a meeting needs to take place. And Anthony was a guy that didn't want to go to these meetings. He would complain how far the drive was, for example, from Staten Island to Queens or Long Island. And Big John, for some reason, and I know the reason, would let Anthony get away with all these excuses. And the reason he let him get away with it was because Anthony's wife was supposed to build a restaurant in Staten Island. And Big John wanted Anthony to give a company that he was associated to the build-out contract. It never did happen, but John's greed came before him being an efficient captain when it came to Anthony. Over time, Big John would pit Anthony against me, which didn't take much convincing. Now, the complete opposite of Big John was Joe Cafe, a very different type of captain. Johnny Cyburns made a comment one day after Anthony gave him another excuse why he couldn't come to awake. He said they should put Anthony in Cafe's crew. He'll have him walking in one shoe. I had plenty of dealings with Cafe to learn his ways, and his ways were he was a stickler for protocol. The run-in Anthony had with him was at the restaurant Angelina's in Staten Island. We were all there for John's brother, Bubsy, who was celebrating the baptism of his twins. I was sitting at a table with Joey and Anthony and their wives. When Joe Cafe walked in, I got up to say hello, and so did Joey. But Anthony never got up and waved hello to him from his seat. As soon as I seen him do it, I knew there was going to be a problem because I knew Cafe. They had an outside bar and I was standing there having a drink with Joey when Anthony walked over to us with his face all red. He said, could you believe this fucking Cafe? He went to Big John and complained that I didn't get up to say hello to him. 
I looked at Joey. I said, I knew that was going to happen. In all fairness to Cafe, when you don't stand up to greet either a friend, a captain, or a boss, it's disrespectful. Anthony cursed Cafe for the rest of the time that we were there. Another reason Cafe made a big issue out of it was to stick it to Big John. They had a rivalry and didn't like each other. So by going to him and telling him about one of his guys being disrespectful, he made Big John look bad. As a captain, you're responsible for the guys in your crew. But more importantly, they're a reflection on you. I ran into John after Anthony told me what happened. And he asked if I heard what took place. And I told him that I did. He said, out of all people, he had to do that to Cafe. And of course, he had to come right over and break my balls with this. So Cafe did what he set out to do, aggravate Big John. Years ago, a guy in the family named Joe Torti was in Dom Trasulo's crew. For some reason, he felt he couldn't make money in that crew and asked to be put with Joe Cafe. Dom told me he didn't give a shit. At the time, he had one of the biggest crews in the family. So Torti goes to a cafe, and one afternoon, Cafe calls for him and tells him that he wants to see him. But Torti tells him he can't come, and he gives him the reason that he's eating in Petey Red's club. Petey Red was Petey DiCietta, a Genovese captain at that time, who would become their street boss. The last thing you want to do is tell your captain that you can't come because you're at the club of another family. I don't know what Torty was thinking when he said that, but as a result, Cafe had him transferred back to Dom's crew. Dom was laughing when he told me the story and called Torty brainless. Another guy to have a run in with Cafe was Joe Perna. One day he had a meet with Cafe, and when he showed up, Cafe gave him a tongue lashing because Perna showed up with a five o'clock shadow. I have to say, anytime I had a meeting, I always shaved. You want to look presentable. According to Perna, he shaved the day before and said that Cafe was just being a prick. Although after that tongue lashing, Perna made sure he was freshly shaved whenever meeting someone. I had my own run-ins with Cafe. Him and I had a conversation about getting me out of Big John's crew. And he told me not to tell Big John that we spoke. But after that, he went to Big John and asked him to release me and never gave me a heads up. So when Big John questioned me, he made it seem like Joe told him that we already spoke. And then he asked me if I spoke to him. So I said yes. When I met with Cafe afterwards, he wanted to know why I told Big John that we spoke. I said, Joe, you should have gave me a heads up that you're going to speak with him. I thought he was trying to trap me. Cafe never mentioned it again. The last meeting I had in that life was with Joe Cafe. I'm not going to get into the whole story because I recently just mentioned the incident. Quickly, I brought a pistol to that meeting. And Cafe knew I was strapped up. And I wanted him to know. I never forget the look on his face when he looked down at my jacket that was hanging low on my right side. He had a nervous smirk on his face. I'll tell you one thing. He didn't attempt to give me a tongue lashing. The ironic thing about this whole story is how Anthony is now in Joe Cafe's crew. And I know he didn't like Cafe. While he's in that crew, he can't give the excuses that he used to get away with in Big John's crew because Cafe will put him in check immediately. And what I can tell you is, you can believe when Cafe walks into a room, Anthony's no longer greeting him from his seat. <laughs> <laughs>